Our first guest tonight is an Oscar and Grammy-winning superstar who was born before our very eyes. You can see her now smoking, scheming, and sipping cappuccino in House of Gucci. It is in theaters now. Please say ciao to Lady Gaga. <laughs> love having you here and I appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Hello, beautiful audience. Yeah. It felt like they were in a better mood than usual and I think it's because of you. Oh, that, no. What the, um, And the band, how you guys, how you band, feeling? Cleto and the Cletones, they're fine, they're fine. Some Sorry, of them I'm are on drugs. I'm a musician. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? What do you do for the weekend? Do you, do you watch football? Do you yeah. do anything like that? I watch football, I watch hockey. You do? Dogs. Oh, all right. You know, I was thinking about you and the Super Bowl, and I was thinking about Dre and Snoop and Mary J. Blige, uh, Eminem doing the Super Bowl show. Was that a good experience for you, looking back at it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, playing the Super Bowl is a huge honor, and I, I was so, I remember when I got the phone call to play the show, I just cried. I just cried and ran around my room. And then I don't know why I made a very silly decision to decide to try to catch a touchdown. That's what I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> yeah. But so. it wasn't a silly decision. And I think also, I just have, I have, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking this, but I think the fact that this went the way it did makes perfect sense in uh, the arc of your whole life because you, we know you can sing, we know you can dance, and you're gonna do all these things, but then you decide at the end of this performance. I can play football. You're gonna catch a, <laughs> a pass, which is risky, very risky, right? It's, yeah, it's super risky, but you know, I wanted to, I wanted to jump in and jump out of the performance because I thought it was kind of compositionally interesting. Um, so uh, I was so super excited to, to catch this football, but four out of five times that we practiced it, I didn't, didn't get it. And everybody on my team wanted to throw the football to me at the Super Bowl. They did? And I was like, guys, we need a quarterback. Like, I don't, I, Is I, that I, right? Oh yeah, they're like, I can do it, it's no problem. I used to, you know, like with my boyfriend in high school, I was like, um, no, no. We're not in high school, such, I'm not your boyfriend, I need a quarterback. So we had a real quarterback come and throw me that ball. And what was so cool is that my sister, uh, Natalie, who's a designer, um, Topo Studio, uh, she uh, made this incredible football that was covered in uh, like diamonds, not real diamonds, but you know, diamonds. She made it even harder to catch. Yeah, she yeah. made the ball heavier <laughs> and uh, she put my name on it. So when I caught the ball, I caught it right where it said Gaga on it. And uh, it was funny because I, I, no one could see, but I landed in this giant foam pit like that you would like see at a gym or something. And I landed in the pit and I went, did I catch it? I caught it, I caught it, did they get it? Did they get it on camera? Did the people see it? We actually have it on camera right here. Let's take a look. Super Bowl 51! Did you ever think like, like if I miss, if this ball bounces off my head, everyone's gonna laugh at me for a long time. Oh, I knew the headline would be like, you know, uh, the Patriots win and Lady Gaga loses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's just like stick, stick to singing, honey. <laughs> Where is that football now? Do you still have it? Yeah, I do. Is it uh, displayed somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, oh, all right. Did you play sports at all as a kid? I swam. Oh, you're on the swim team or just? Briefly. Yeah. I was a dancer. Uh huh. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Ballet, jazz. Same here. Tap. All of that. <laughs> Come on, show us what you got, Jimmy. They know. <laughs> and you're um. You're getting a lot of, uh, as you know, awards recognition for this movie for House of Gucci playing this part. <laughs> now, most people think of you as like a musician who then just got in, started acting because you were popular, but that's not really how it went at like all. Football. Is it? Yeah, and a football. <laughs> People think of you as a football player who now, <laughs> but you started acting and singing at roughly the same time, right? As far as- the... 
training goes. I mean, actually, I started acting earlier. Earlier? Yeah, I did. And I always wanted to be an actress, uh, much more than I wanted to be a singer. And I went to different acting schools, uh, the Monica May Academy when I was very little, and then at the Lee Strasberg Institute where I studied a lot of sense memory technique and Stanislavski. There's a conservatory called Circle in the Square. And uh, I just always wanted to be an actress, but I really was terrible at uh, auditioning. And I got into Tisch. I went to college for about five minutes. At NYU? Yeah. You went? Stay in school. You majored in what there? Uh, I, in a musical theater. In musical theater. Yeah, and I, uh, so I, I, I used to get in trouble because you weren't allowed to audition. They wanted Why? To, they wanted you to focus on studying your craft, which I'd been studying since I was four. Right. Because I'm psychotic about uh -huh. art. And, uh, you know, so I was auditioning all the time, and I remember this one time I... Uh, got many, many callbacks to play Maureen in the uh, domestic tour of Rent. And I was so excited, and I got, I got callback after callback after callback, and then one day they said, um, so how old are you? And I actually was in college when I was 17. Oh, really? Wow. And um, <laughs> so I had to tell them I was 17. And they, so I, I like legally wasn't allowed to go on this tour, and I wasted all their time, and I, they were like, well, we can't hire you. And then I went back to class and I got called into like the principal's office and I got scolded for auditioning. They ratted you out? They rat, no, I don't, they, the so people, like kids in the school, I don't know, but like someone found out. Well, also I skipped class to go to Oh yeah, school. okay, well that, <laughs> that may have tipped them off. Yeah. Did you ever do like commercial auditions and uh, yep. Law and Order, that New York stuff, that yeah. kind of thing? I did commercial auditions, I was terrible. Do you remember any of the commercials you auditioned for? Yes. What? What was it? <laughs> there was a very spicy Lens Crafters commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Lens Crafters, wow. Yeah. And I just, um, I got a call back. <laughs> you know, callbacks are when, you know, they liked you the first time so you can come back and it's a good idea to wear the same t-shirt, you know, so they remember the, that it was you. I don't like, so I wore the same outfit and I went back and I had one line. I don't remember what my one line was, but uh, this time, there were cameras on me. The first time, it was just a couple people in the room. And so now there was cameras on me. I had never been in front of television cameras before. And I just completely froze. And at some point in the commercial, the glasses were supposed to fall off. I was supposed to fumble my glasses. I think the idea was that any glasses that aren't lens crafters, glasses are no good. That is true, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I say my line, and they are like, uh, sweetheart, uh, when it, the, the glasses are supposed to fall off. And I, I was like, oh, and then I just started, like, <laughs> just, I just started making them fall off and I didn't redo the commercial. And uh, then, you know, when you don't get the part, they just go, thank you. <laughs> and, then, and you're just. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. That would, you know what, you lucked out, really, because now I would be throwing to your Lens Crafters commercial that you did and didn't want anybody and to see. And I would see. be very proud. You would, okay, you would have. Yes, and also, but you know what, I learned something that day. What? I learned all about rejection and how to take it like a queen. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> I learned that a lot. Lady Gaga is here with us, House of Gucci is a movie. I'll be right back. Where is he right now? Where is he right now? I'm not the liberty to say. Look in my eyes. Do you see anything in these eyes that would let you think that I would ever let anyone ruin my daughter's life? Compromise her. Do you? Do you see that? You know. That won't happen. Eat your heart out, Lance Crafters. That is Lady Gaga in the House of Gucci. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're great in the movie. It's just, uh, it's amazing that you're this talented and Lens Crafters didn't recognize it. It really is. You, uh, <laughs> you are an Italian-American, which is different from being an Italian in a lot of ways. Yeah, totally. Um, being over in Italy, I, first of all, I wouldn't, I would have to, the movie, the plot of the movie would have to be me getting fatter as the movie goes along because I don't think I could, 
I don't know. I don't think I can control myself knowing I'm there for a certain amount of time. Do you have that, or is that something that? No, I ate the entire you time. You did? Yeah, OK, the good. The entire time. I just ate my way through the set. What's the best thing you ate while you were there? <sighs> there was so much. The pizza was so good. The pasta was so good. The sandwiches. Were you able to? I had so much coffee, though. A lot of coffee. Cafe doppio. Like, like uh, it's a double, but I had them all day. So, like, think 24 espressos in one, in, in one day, every hour. That's a lot of espressos, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, um, was it fun speaking with that Italian accent? And I know you did that, like, you, you did that all day, so you didn't yeah. drop out of it, right? Yeah, I spoke in my accent all the time so that I could get really used to talking to somebody with my accent and have a really normal conversation so that I could just be in my body and talk. And uh, it was really great for me on set, but with my friends and family, you know, I think they had to get used to it. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> it's just something that for us, it's like, oh, that's great. Yeah, but like your sister would be like, all right, enough with the Italian accent already. Well, you know what's so funny is my family, it's like my like creative neurosis is like, they're like, <laughs> Just, you hungry? You know, it's yeah, right, like, yeah. but you're from Brooklyn. You know, like my family's very, they, they know who I am. I think it's more that uh, for me, uh, that immersive approach to acting is something that is really beholden to my heart. And, and I have to say, no, you know, we don't always talk about this, but my fellow actors on that set, everybody was in character. It was not just me. I mean, that, that movie was shot with, uh, Incredible cast. What a I'm cast! So it is. grateful to have worked with, and we were we were in it all the time. Jeremy Irons, um, Al Pacino. When, your parents had to go nuts when you told them you were doing a movie with Al Pacino, right? Oh yeah, my father's had heart issues his whole life, and I was like, this is gonna put him back in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I, and my, my family is so Italian. We're Italian American, but we're Italian, and my. <laughs> My father, I was like, are you sitting down? And he goes, what happened? <laughs> and he's like, and I'm like, are you, were you stressed today? And he goes, who's involved? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, that's like every Italian in New York. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. And so then I tell him it's Pacino. Oh my God, Stephanie, that's my real name. <laughs> Uh, and my sister said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and my mother was so proud. My whole family, it was, it's, it, it, but also, and, and for everybody, for Adam Driver, for Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek? Yeah, and, and, and Jared Leto, Jared Leto, he's amazing. I didn't even know it was him. I, I, I figured it out afterwards. I was like, I thought Jared Leto was in this movie. Like, oh, he was in the movie, yeah. But you know, it's, it's so great doing scenes with Jared because like, like you know, Jared, I, you, we're both maniacs and to a certain extent. And and I think like, you know, in some sort of way, I think if unless you're really in tune with yourself as an artist and respect the person that you're working with, all that hair and makeup that we were both in might feel uh, really hard to, you know, to connect on a real and human level. But I just I never met Jared on set. I was always with Paolo and he was always with Patrizia. And um, you know that that um the father, son, and house of Gucci. That was completely ad lib in that scene. That was completely spontaneous. It's, it wasn't in the script. Wow, that's fun. Yeah, and when you have moments like that, and you go like, "Oh, that's just great," and then it makes it into the film. Yeah, I used to do it in my trailer as a prayer before I went to do my scenes. So after the the team got me all ready and I'd studied, and you know, I just would before I'd go on set, I'd go, "Ah, father, son, and also Gucci." <laughs> and then we were shooting the scene one day, you know, and he goes, he goes, "Can you keep a secret?" And I said, "Father, son, and also Gucci," and it just naturally made it in, you know. That's great. The um, and you're playing a real person, so that is a, a leap too. The uh, you talked about Salma Hayek, and I heard in an interview you said that you guys had a love scene together, and it was excised from the film. Who cut that out of the movie? Not me. <laughs> and I'll never forget when I told, I was like, I was like, okay, listen, so, uh, before we do this scene, I just want your consent to do something together. And she's like, okay, 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 what do you want to do? <laughs> and I said, okay, so I was thinking, 
you know, after the hit gets put out on Maurizio and you get the phone call that he's dead, that I walk over to you and kiss you. And she's like, what? <laughs> and, and so then we told Ridley and Giannina Scott, his wife, who's the producer on the film, and Giannina is amazing. She's been uh, cultivating this film for 20 years. So this was 20 years in the making. And so then we, we asked them, they were like, yeah, sure, try it. And we did it. Now, the only reason it's not in the movie is because that whole scene was cut. Uh, but it was an awesome scene, and there, she, she's walking around the house, and the camera was following her feet, and all her cats were following her. And Selma, in order to get the cats to follow her, she put a bunch of catnip in her boots. <laughs> so Selma's walking around the house, and the cats are following her. And I'm like, <laughs> and, then, and then we're surrounded by cats, and we started making out. And get, I made out with Selma Hayek. So. <laughs> Maybe that'll be released as its own and, film. But I'm like, I'm like that, I'm like that really, you know, annoying kid in school that's like bragging that they made out with the popular girl but has no proof. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and I, I'm gonna have to like break into Ridley. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll job. get that for you. Yeah. Well, it's great to see you. Congratulations. See you. The movie is called House of Gucci. It's in theaters now. It comes out digitally on February 1st. Lady Gaga, everybody. We'll be back with Jake Tapper. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.